investment appraisal we are really going for we are doing adjusted present value a p p that looking fine you can even see my window from the board hi guys welcome to another class on investment appraisal in this class we're going to do um adjusted present value okay so i said in the previous class when we started risk management in investment appraisal that there are several ways of handling risk in investment appraisal so i am um, apv was the fifth method which i said we're going to dedicate a whole video two videos to it okay you see some questions in investment appraisal and you have to know when to use adjusted present value to evaluate the project so whenever there is a steer that's what i call it whenever there is a steer that's when you use adjusted present ah. now they make noise ah so whenever there is a steer that's when you use your adjusted present value okay now the S here stands for subsidy when there's a subsidized loan. Okay, subsidy, subsidy on loan. The T here stands for tax. Okay, so when there's a complex tax rate, maybe in year one tax is thirty percent, in year two they say tax will be twenty five percent, in year three tax is forty percent, something like that. When you are seeing all those indications in your question, that's when you know that you need to use APV, right? Whenever there is issue cost, if they tell you that there is issue cost, this R stands for risk, okay, which is even the main reason for APV now. You know, APV is a method of risk management in investment appraisal. So when they are going to do a new business, of course, there will be a new operational risk, which is a new business risk, right? And there will be also a new finance risk, most likely, if they are going to borrow money and change their capital structure. That makes sense. So, how do you calculate your APV? There's a formula for calculating APV. The formula. is formula or format, whichever way, for calculating your adjusted present value. What you need to do is you need to start from your base case MPV. Right? Base case MPV. You calculate it. When you get this, you need to get your present value of financing effect. Okay? And under the present value of financing effect, is these things you have okay so you have your present value of issue cost issue cost can you see you have your present value of tax shield i'll explain all the variables and you also have your present value of subsidy or subsidized loan so the present value of issue cost will definitely be a negative issue cost right Present value of tax shield. Tax shield means tax savings. I'll explain. It's definitely a positive. Present value of subsidy. Subsidy is definitely a positive. Subsidized loan. Subs okay, I'll explain it. Let me just write the format. Then you get a particular balance. That balance would be your APV. If it is positive, you accept the project. If it is negative, you would reject the project. For two projects that are mutually exclusive, whichever um, project has the higher APV, that is project that you're going to accept. Now let us explain all these variables. So to explain those variables, I said when you want to calculate your um, APV, you start from your base case NPV, right? Your base case NPV can either be positive or it could be negative. So your base case NPV is the NPV gotten by discounting using the cost of equity of an ungeared company. KO. KO. You know when you're trying to get NPV, which we've done in class two our second class on investment appraisal you know when you get your net cash flows right for your year one year two year three year four you now say discount at work you, you remember that now this base case mpv hmm? the base case here is me is telling you that you should discount using q cost of equity of an ungeared company right the assumption in this apv is that let us try to discount the project. Let us evaluate this project based on the most expensive form of capital. The assumption here is that equity is the expensive type of capital. In the type of capital, you have equity and debt, right? Shares and loan. So it is assumed that equity is the more, more expensive one. So let us discount use, using cost of equity of an ungeared company. You know, when something is ungeared, it means you have stripped out any debt elements in it, right? 
there's a question and this is a question we're going to solve in the next class that's um you see how all these things are demonstrated because if you don't solve examples you will not understand this epic so we are definitely going to solve example so base case mpv is your normal mpv but now they're saying don't discount with work you know work is the cost of capital that um, takes into consideration cost of equity and cost of debt remember your work formula but now they're saying don't discount with work discount with cost of equity of an ungeared company that makes sense i said to calculate your apv the next thing is to get the present value of the financing effect right now those things that have to do with debt hmm? the first thing is what the present value of the issue cost they will tell you that in this project or this investment opportunity that you're trying to evaluate um they are trying to raise loan and they'll tell you that the issue cost is maybe like five percent they can say issue cost is five percent of five percent of say the total fund required hmm? Or they can tell you that oh issue cost is five percent of the total funds raised. There's a way they will paint the scenario for you that you will know whether you should say five over hundred multiplied by the total funds raised, or whether it's going to be five over ninety-five. Hmm? Because sometimes the issue cost is part of the total amount raised. Okay. Now this issue cost, they're asking you to get the present value, right? So let's say the issue cost is say two hundred thousand naira. For example, you know, issue cost is not the capital itself. The capital can be maybe 10 million naira. But you know, to raise this 10 million naira, you will need some money now. Maybe right issue. Do you understand my point? So let's say the issue cost, the cost of raising the fund, that's what issue cost is, is 200,000 naira. To get the present value of that issue cost, what do you need to do? You just need to multiply by discount factor. To get present value means discount it. Okay? So the discount factor in year zero will most likely be 1.000. So that has to get your present value of issue cost. The next thing is what your present value of subsidy. This subsidy means that, let me just explain the way questions give you. They'll say government likes this investment opportunity and they've decided to give the company a subsidized loan. So maybe the normal loan, which is obtainable in the market, is going for, let's say, 8%, like 8% interest. A subsidized loan can be going for, let's say, 5%. So you see that kind of thing in the question. So because of this subsidized loan, normally you would have taken this loan at what? 8%. But now government wants to give you at 5%. So it gives rise to a financing effect. So you have to take consideration of that to when evaluating the investment using APV, right? And the formula for calculating the present value of subsidized loan is just discount the subsidy, right? Subsidized loan into 1 minus T. Right, so we post tax multiplied by normal rates that's that eight percent minus the subsidy rate. Can you see? Then you multiply by your discount factor. Does it make sense? You multiply by your discount factor, that's what is making you to um, get the present value now. Okay, maybe now the company wants to raise loan of 10 million. And normally they'll raise that loan at a cost of say eight percent, right? But the government wants to give it to them at five percent. So that three percent difference is what you're basically taking in, into consideration to calculate the subsidy on the loan, and then you get the present value. Very simple, which we are going to solve in questions. But you have to digest, so you need to understand this one first. Then you get your present value of subsidy, which is an inflow effect, right? Then you have your present value of tax shield. Right, tax shield also means tax savings on what on interest. So to calculate this, the formula is get your interest first. So that 10 million naira that they borrow, there's an interest they are paying on it. Interest is the amount paid to the debt holder to service the, in, the interest, maybe annually, right? So let's say that interest is 200,000 naira. What you need to do is you need to get the tax shield. That is what is the tax savings. So you need to multiply it by what the tax rates. Then you multiply by what your discount factor for the number of years for n years at x percent it's very simple just follow the sentence present value of tax shield on interest mm -hmm. what you need to do is to get your interest first so that formula is what interest multiplied by what your tax rate right multiplied by discount factor why, why are we saying discount factor of n years because 
your um, interest is payable every year, right? So sometimes it can tell you that this tax is payable one year in arrears. Or it can tell you that tax is payable in the year that profits are made. You know, we've already done that in previous classes, right? You have year one, year two, year three, year four, year five. So if you have all this as your what? Cash inflow. And you want to now charge tax on this. These are your net cash flow. You want to charge tax. You know, if you tell you that it's paid one year in arrears, means tax of year one will be applied in year, year two. Tax of year two will be applied in what? Year three. Year four. Year five. So it seems that like year five tax will extend to what? Year six. Okay? So in that, at that point, you use delayed annuity. You will delay your annuity. And do you know how to calculate delayed annuity? I don't even know if I should make a separate video on that one. But it's just... Okay, let me just talk about that by the side. So to calculate your delayed annuity, we already know the formula for this present value of tax shield, right? Because sometimes in questions, they, they, they will tell you that tax is payable one year in arrear, right? So you use delayed annuity when your tax is usually one year in arrear. So let's say you have gotten your interest as 200,000 200, every year, okay? Your interest, not if it's 200,000 every 200,000 naira every year as your interest. You know, that means bullet payment. Sometimes you might have to do amortization table. So once you calculate your tax rate on your interest, you have this to be, say, 60,000 naira. This is what you're looking for. Your tax savings, right, on interest. Now, you need to get the present value because every year you claim this tax savings. And you know, remember the concept of tax savings. Tax savings is gotten when there's a tax deductible item because this interest is, is tax deductible. Is exempted from profit before applying tax so that effect gives rise to a tax savings okay and tax savings is an inflow effect do you understand so now let's now try and get the present value of this so if you have this sixty thousand in year one say sixty thousand in year one sixty thousand in year two sixty thousand in year three and sixty thousand in year four right but they're telling you that it should be one year in arrears you need to apply your tax one year in arrears so if you want to discount this type of thing now, you, your discount factor, maybe you are discounting at say 10%, right? So 0 0.909 will be in year one, 0 point, um, say 82 something, 0 0.715, 0 0.683, like that, year one to year four. So it, this one that is going to be in year one, because it is one year in area, it won't be applied in year one, it will be applied in year two, right? It will be applied in year three, it will be applied in year four, that's year three zone being applied in year four. Therefore, it will extend to year five because year four zone will be applied in year five. So it means you need a discount factor for year five, right? So because you're not going to be doing this thing one by one because it's constant cash flows. And whenever you have constant cash flows, you need to do cumulative discount factor. So what you now do in that point, I just pray it out for you to understand. What you do in that instance is for you to say what? 60,000 multiplied by cumulative discount factor at 10%, right? For four years, you see that in your annuity table. Maybe it's like three point some some something. Hmm? Multiplied by discount factor at ten percent hmm? for preceding year, preceding year, and that preceding year is year one. Year one's discount factor, right? So you multiply by let's say zero point nine zero nine. That will give you your what cumulative discount factor for year two to year five, where tax is actually applicable. So that means that you've already gotten the, like you've already removed year one. This method is actually the multiplication method. You are multiplying. You can also use the subtraction method, right? Because what you are trying to get is cumulative discount factor because you have constant cash flow. This one is just by the way. So you say, you can also say what? 60,000 multiplied by cumulative discount factor at 10% for five years. That's for year one to year five, right? Check that you sit in your new table 10% under year five, it will give you maybe four points, something, something, something. Then you say minus discount factor at 10% for year one, that's like 0 0.909. By the time you deduct it, that's the subtraction method, you get your cumulative discount factor for year two to year five. All you need to do, do was to deduct, remove out year one because tax is in arrears. I don't know if it makes sense, but it makes sense. I, I believe it makes sense. So, I've already explained everything under um, APV, 
that's already the formula so the next thing we have to move into is to solving questions which i'm going to solve in the next class okay